Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now I'm going to ring my mate now, Rico Helia, up who lives in London. He's from Finland. I started the uh, channel with Rico uh, 19 months ago, 20 months ago. And uh, he's a good guy, he's a close friend of mine, so let's give him a ring. How you doing Rico? Yeah, it's good. It's very warm in London. It's what? It's very warm. Is it red hot? Yeah, yesterday was like 30 something degrees and yeah, the house is boiling and outside it's too hot to do. So you're having a salad and not a Sunday dinner today then? Yeah, well I never have a salad, I'll just have meat. No roast potatoes. No roast potatoes for Rico today then. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How's things with you, Ross? Well, all right, mate. We're plodding on. Uh, we're just getting ready for uh, for a show on uh, next uh, Friday at Ponds, oh, Ponds Ford. Yeah, it's uh, it's shaping up all right. And uh, boxing at the moment, it's it's coming to end of the season now, and not everybody's. Got a lot of spare cash because they're all going on holiday, and you know, kids are going to be coming off school for you know uh, six, seven weeks, aren't they? Soon, and yeah, you know, money's tight, and that, and it's it's an it's hard to to uh, to go through with a show and make a profit on it. I mean, as you've just seen, Eddie Earns has pulled plug on his show because the numbers don't add up. Now, that's where him and Dennis differ. Because Dennis sees it, sees it through, and he's prepared to lose. He likes to have a bit of a gamble. The herds don't gamble unless it's other people's money, do they? They're accountants. That's that's why they're not in it for boxing in terms of long term. What they what they really want to do is just make as much money as they can, and then once the cycle goes, they'll be off to other things. Yeah, and then they'll come back in when the plant when the cycle changes again, won't they? Exactly. That's what they've done for years. You, you, you might remember when Chris Eubank Sr., when he got beat off Collins in the rematch, yeah. uh, they bailed out boxing, didn't they, the Hearns? Yeah, well, they sent him around the world, didn't they? Now, that was before, wasn't it? No, when, when, he, uh, when he lost to uh, Steve Collins, it was in his... Uh, he was in his rematch, and I don't think that he did much after that with them, to be honest. I'll soon tell you. I don't think he did. Now, the Steve Collins rematch. Yeah, he, he, did, two, he did two shows on his own. They weren't matchroom yeah. shows. They, he went to uh, Egypt, didn't he, or uh, Cairo or something, and Dubai, didn't he? He did somewhere, yeah, those companies, and then before that he had already been, before the Collins fight. Yeah, he, he went on his own. And everywhere else, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he, after the second Collins loss, he never had a deal with Ern, Ern then. And uh, Ern, Ern had, there were a lot of messy things happened there. If anybody's interested, they need to go Google Steve Collins and Barry Ern court transcripts, and you'll see what were going on behind the scenes. I'm not going to spoil it for people, but you'll see what old Barry Hearn did and how he got caught out in court by the judge. Now, he sued Steve Collins and he lost. Now, over it, Collins sued him and won. One of, one of them. But uh, a young Chris Eubank out to dry once it all went salty at the end, once he got beat. But like I said early, earlier, I, I said in an earlier video, Chris Eubank were flogged in his career by them. He was fighting every two months, wasn't he? Yeah, it was a good old uh, slave day that Yeah, he was fighting every two and a half months from beating Nigel Benn. 
to losing to Collins. From the first Ben win, when he won the world title, to losing to Collins, he was fighting every two and a half months. Now, fair enough, he only beat four world champions. And he had a lot of title fights, but he was very active and they, they cashed him out. Just like what they're doing to Joshua, it's the same thing, but on a bigger scale. Now... You know, you know what that reminds me more of? O'Hara Davis. O'Hara Davis, yeah. Once they, once he, once they had no more use to him, they're no good. And it's the same with Joshua. If he gets beat against Andy Ruiz, he's no good to them. They might start wheeling him out for crumbs then, but... If you look on my interview, you'll see that Eddie Hearn mentioned the rematch 19 seconds into his first interview after Joshua's defeat. 19 seconds he mentioned the rematch. He then went on to mention it 15 times in the same interview. Have so, you seen what Oscar De La Hoya tweeted? What's he put? Well, he put something... Um like Eddie Hearn must stop making, you know, you must stop talking about Callum Smith fighting Canelo. Just focus on your, just focus on your old fighters. Uh, I'm hearing you're having troubles making the Joshua Ruiz rematch. Yeah, well, you heard what Dennis said, didn't you, in that interview with me? He said that the Joshua Ruiz rematch, it's not all cut and dry now they think, is it? No. Well, there's people in the game that are saying that it might not happen that fight, you know. Yeah, I would have been surprised if it didn't happen if I'd been on. So, it, it, uh, it remains to be seen, but, I mean, it's been it's been for 30 days now. Yeah. And uh, nothing seems to have uh, happened, Rico, does it? What do you think? Well, I think... We know how sort of Gatter got Eddie is with his announcement, so he'll announce the fight even before it happens and you know, he'll go in IFL but he's been quite cagey about this so to me it sort of indicates that there's troubles in the negotiation table. Well, it's like this, right? It it's thirty days have gone by now, right? And we we we've uh, we're not we're nowhere near to see seeing the fight. We're hearing a lot of hot air, there's a lot of back and forward and it's like I said a few weeks ago, do they seriously think at Matchroom in Essex that after all the shit that Eddie has stuck to them lot, right, we're, picking, we're cherry picking with Joshua, do they seriously think that they're gonna, just going to let him dictate the, with the Andy Ruiz rematch? No, definitely not. Do you know what I see happening? I see Ruiz fighting Wilder, losing yeah, belts, right. and then them, them having alt belts, and exactly. then milking it, then milking mandatory. Exactly. And, uh, you know, if Wilder or Ortiz is a paper view, I haven't seen much promotion for him at this no. stage. I know it's early, but, you know, usually you have a third stage, you have a best, so it would probably indicate that the fight, you know, the Ortiz fight isn't as Sure, fire as it would be because they probably negotiated with Wilder, you know, in the background. Well, they all are high fighters, so it's an easy deal to be done in house. Yeah, what Eddie Earns forgetting to mention is that um, uh, that uh, when you speak to these sanctioning bodies, some of them they know other people in the boxing industry, and Eddie Hearn's been trying to get the WBA and the IBF fragmented. You know, uh, all, all uh, so that the belts are available for other people. He hasn't even tried with the WBO once because 
obviously that he, that they're not keen on him but he's been trying his best to get them belts split up which is what you see the promoters are the problem the fans want one champion don't we yeah, like we had back in the day. But we've got Eddie here now. He was screaming about there being one champion. Now that he's on the outside looking in, he's trying to get the belt split up. And when I heard that this morning, I was disgusted, mate. Disgusted. Do you know what yeah, I mean? They're the unbelievable. Biggest, but, but the biggest joke in boxing is the WBC giving Canelo the franchise belt, which they've created, which effectively means that if Canelo loses a fight, the winner gets the fight for a regular WBC belt, and it's like another made-up belt they're giving Canelo. I mean, what well, the WBC are gonna do? Gonna do like a like a WBA thing? Well, they already have. They already have. I think they have some sort of like regular belt, and no, they have the Emiratus champions, Emiratus, right? Emiratus, yeah. Yeah. Then they have the. WBC champion, and now they're giving Canelo what they call a franchise belt, which is above all of that. Fucking franchise belt? Yeah. Jesus. It's the thing, you know, the thing that Canelo is the franchise champion. Franchise? What, like KFC or McDonald's? Yeah, something like that. Fucking hell, man. You know, it gets worse, doesn't it, Rico? Canelo, if you beat Canelo, you get a shot at the world champion, but Canelo doesn't lose his belt or something silly like that. I mean, what's Joe Joyce at the moment? What What is he? Is he WBA gold? Yeah, something like that. Because when I look on rankings here, you've got like Ruiz, Trevor Bryan and Joe Joyce. They've got three champions at WBA. Yeah, do, do you remember when, um, Canelo was fighting Joe Joyce and Joe Joyce was fighting against Golovkin and the WB made the aspect belt which is a belt which they've just created yeah like they just made a belt for that fight like it bears no real meaning in you know boxing yeah. standing yeah. so if you're an aspect champion it doesn't mean anything yeah Jesus it's getting terrible isn't it it is anyway you let... had an agenda didn't you are you what mate you, you, had a, you wanted to cover quite a few things yeah, I've got I've got a few got a few things uh, wrote, wrote down here. Uh, here, there, mate. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, here we go. Rose and Fowler, will it happen? They're now saying the second of August. Um, I don't know. I think it's probably not going to happen. I think they sort of probably have to make it happen just because Brian Rose has kicked up a fuss. That he's not had any money, and he's not had any money. But will Brian Rose want to work with them? I'm not so sure. Um, I'd probably say it probably will happen. Yeah. I just think of what card? What card is it going to happen on there? Uh, well, th th they've obviously moved it, haven't they, to the second of August because it were on the. Uh it were on the the Sky Show, wasn't it, next Friday, wasn't yeah. it? Now, Felix Cash Felix Cash has not got a date. A Coley's gonna go on the Dillian White Rivers undercard. But Felix Cash Felix Cash has not had his date uh, sorted out. So but Rose and Fowler's now second of August. So, yeah, will it happen, do you think? Yeah, I probably think it will, because who else is Fowler going to fight against? Eh? Who else is Fowler going to fight against? Cheeseman? Yeah. That could be a fight, they might make Fowler against Cheeseman. Fowler against Cheeseman's a good fight, but if, if, why, why have they got him penciled in for Brian Rose, they want 2nd of August now, though? Well, you know, you know how it is. They they just mm. playing games, aren't they? Yeah. Well, it looks to me like they couldn't, they couldn't, they, they were frightened to put that show on at Manchester. I mean, a lot of people were saying it'd not go ahead the show, and it didn't. Yeah, I saw that as well. I, well, they haven't sold any tickets. I mean, why would he go and watch? Why would he go and watch that show? That show was terrible. There's a big fee to pay for Manchester Arena as well, Rico. Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? That Eddie Hearn came out this week and said that what they want to do is consolidate 
to have better quality cards but have less cards. Which I don't understand because... By having what? So they have less, so they would have less guy shows but they would have better quality cards. But what I don't understand about that is that they've only had two or three Saturday fight nights, haven't they? Yeah, but... What, so, so is Eddie Hearn admitting that 20 dates a year from Sky is too much for him? Yes. So if, if that's the case, why don't they just give all them other dates to up and coming promoters or promoters who are paying for, to, to, to go on other, other TV channels and paying through it now? Why don't they share them dates out then? Well, I have no idea. Instead of just looking after his mates like uh, Sourlands, uh, do you know what I mean? Why yeah, don't you share Sourland the dates? Doing a land grab, to be honest. Hey. Or the world box, the world boxing super series is doing a land grab. So what they're trying to do is to get on Sky and have their own relationships and yeah. you know try and push their stuff because in a couple of years when the contract expires between Matchroom and Sky they'll be in a position because they've already delivered shows for Sky and, you know, the ratings have been good, so they'll be in a position to get that and then they might actually start getting the foul and German shows on Sky. Yeah, but at the end of the day, right, they're not shows that are going to be held in Britain, are they? No. And this is what Eddie Earn has done to boxing, in my opinion. I know you have gimps who, who, who don't agree with me and they want to go out and make videos about it, but bottom line is, they're at the top of the tree and they're abusing it. Now, I'm a Sky subscriber as well as BT Sport. I just had BT Sport until the other week. I've now got both now, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm not getting a good value for money. I mean, I, I had Sky for years and, and now I'm just streaming stuff because I was fed up of paying 60 quid a month and pay-per-views on top, you know, five a year, so that easily comes to £700 a year just to watch the Sky shows. Yeah. And then you had BT on top of that. I mean, boxing's expensive to follow. Yeah, it is, mate. It is, you're right. It's, uh, it's not good. But uh, but anyway, enough talking about uh, Eduardo. Let's move on to the MTK show. What did you make of it? I was here. Yeah, I was there. Um, I was there. Oh, you went. You're cool, uh, did you? Yeah, I went down um, there, and um, you know the atmosphere was good. Uh, you had Anthony Yard knocking bouts. You had uh, loads of boxers there. I think the card was well matched, so uh, there were quite a few fifty fifties on that card. Yeah. Um, so. I think the main talking points from the card are uh, O'Hara Davis lost his fight and everybody in the arena know O'Hara Davis knew because afterwards he was raising Vasquez's his arm and he was shaking his head. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, Ryan Walsh had a you know, close fight with Lewis Paul and uh, both had a good amount of support, but I think Ryan Walsh lost that fight, but it was quite a close fight, but... You know, Ryan Walsh's team were congratulating Paul and at the end and, you know, they seem to seem they seem to see it in a way that actually probably Ryan Walsh lost that fight. Aside from that, um Sierra Old School against who you fight against again. Sierra Old School's the guy that fought against Posco recently. Um he fought a good fight against was it not Dolly Darko. I will come to it in a moment, but that was a great fight. It was just end-to-end -end stuff. But I think, yeah, it was a good show for a small hall show in London. There were a few good names there, good fights. I think tickets did all right. It wasn't completely packed, but it looked relatively, uh, you know, sold out. What did yeah. you make it on TV? I, I watched, I wa to be honest with you, mate, I watched it uh, while texting Terry, actually, on uh, YouTube. I watched yeah. it on YouTube on Coogan Cassius's channel and uh, I, to be honest with you mate, I was quite impressed actually. To say he only yeah. started out, out with a camera, he, uh, I thought the production were really good so well done Coogan Cassius, he, he impressed me actually with, with what, what they've done. They obviously, they must have had about four different cameras there, one in each corner, one, one overlooking it all and I think they had one near the ring. So yeah, they have one near the ring, two on top, and then they must have had some in the corner. Um, 
But it's not it's not IFL cameras because what they are uh, because it was live on ESPN Plus in the US. It's an MTV. Oh right. So 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 basically, so it's just, an ESPN yeah. production then. Yeah, they were just using the same screen and stuff. They, they, they were just giving ESPN let them stream it onto in the UK. In the UK, right? All oh, right then. So, so that's all oh, right then. So, so Coogan's not some super production guy then. <laughs> no, he was just he was just knocking about there with everybody, uh, standing up, knocking about, taking photos with you know. Yeah, he's, yeah, Coogan's a bit uh, of a celebrity now, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He, is. he, he loves it. Or doing interviews. He loves it, boxing. bless him. But he's done well I for mean, his son. But boxing YouTube, interestingly, um, I was speaking to someone there that I know that that, that runs a quite well-known boxing YouTube channel, uh, or while well, he's a part of it, and he was saying that even interviewing the small hall guys at MTK, there yeah. was about five different channels after every fight, and he was just saying it, it's just completely changed because everybody is just trying to get past parts and try and interview these guys, and you know they just show up to these shows, but you know nobody goes to the gyms like you've done, and it's uh, yeah it's quite interesting that you know a show like the MTK show attracts a huge amount of media because some of these guys. You know, a 4-0, 5-0, and, and, you know, how many people are actually going to watch a video of them talking after a fight just randomly if you haven't gone to the German interview those guys? What do you think about that? Uh, I don't know, mate, really, what to fucking... It's just boxing, isn't it, I suppose. I mean, what do you mean with press passes? Yeah, so loads of people have set up YouTube channels just to go to these shows to interview fighters, so oh, yeah. sort of like a free. So for that show, he said there were five YouTube outlets walking around interviewing people. Yeah, you mean like uh, it's just people who think, right? I'm going to get a camera, and I'm going to go yeah. get. I'm going to get a press pass, and I'm going to interview somebody who's famous, and get loads of views off it, and get money. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think I don't, I don't agree with that because they're not really boxing people. They're just in it for money, aren't they? Exactly. They're not, they're not busting the fucking the assholes like me. You know, I've got thousands and thousands of pounds invested in my channel, and you know, time and effort, and you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's becoming a, it's like a, a big money pit that needs to be, to be fed. And these people are, just, they've got no officers, no fucking clout, they've no press passes a fuck all and they're just going out and just blagging it. I don't agree with that. I think you, you I think that the, there's, there's something needs to be done about it but I don't know I mean I mean a lot of boxers now are setting their own YouTube channels up because they're seeing what money you can make with views but it's not it's not as clear cut as what you think and, yeah. and people need to start and understand that you can't just do this on dole you know you can't be on Dole and do this. You've got to be registered to get views. You know it's and and you know there'll be tax man will come knocking eventually. And the, and you know it's uh, it's a pretty cutthroat business. You don't just go out and get a camera and say you want views. Do you know what I mean? It, you've got to be going a bit. It's hard to explain, but I don't agree with it now. But there's a lot of favours going on with these press passes. You know. Yeah, certain people get them and others don't. Yeah, certain people get them and others don't. You've got to be... Well, look, you've got to be like... You can't just go out there and criticise people and then expect them to give you a press pass, even if they put a bad show on, so... You, it's hard to explain. I mean, Steve Bunce, right? I, I had a night out with Steve Bunce, and he told me that Mickey Duff banned him from his shows for telling truth in an article he did in Independent. Now, he, he, he said he was banned for like a good few years. Now, could you imagine Eddie Hearn giving Fred Bloggs a, pa a, a press pass if he said that uh, Eddie... Eddie uh, uh, matched Joshua bad against Andy Ruiz. He's not going to do it, is he? He's just going to tell Frank Smith just to knock the press pass back. And that's how it works. But you get these rimmers, like sporting icons, people like that, 
and they just rim Eddie Hearn and then they get the press passers. But that I don't call that proper journalism, me. I don't call it, and I, I'm not a journalist or anything like that. I, I, I only started this channel up to get some of our fighters some exposure. But you get a lot of people who feel that they have to kiss ass. And they feel that, and then they, they, they become in a situation where once it's time to write something down that their people who are giving them the press passes are not going to like, they're fucking tongue tied, aren't they? Exactly. It's like nobody dare speak a word to Tyson Fury about his seven million dollar donation to charity. Nobody with a camera dare say anything because they know they'll lose the press pass. Nobody dare mention anything about drug testing to them. No. But yeah, they mentioned it about Kid Galahad, didn't they, when he was opponent for Warrington? Yeah, that was unfair. That Nobody was mentioned unfair. it about. Uh, Tyson Fury fighting Swartz, and nobody will mention it about Miller if he fights Tyson Fury, who set the machine on fire with four fucking test failures. They'll not say anything about it, Miller, will they? And, and I think there's a lot of double standards, and you're always going to get that. Yeah. That's what I think. But uh, getting on to the MTK show, what do you think to Anthony Yidget? Yeah, sorry, that was the guy. Anthony Yigid fought against Fire Old School. Um, and after the fight, I saw him outside and he's basically battered. He's not a bad boxer, but he's just too small for the division. And also, he's, he doesn't have enough power to hurt anyone. But no, he's, he's sort of at that British level, if that makes sense. Yeah, he's a British level guy with a European title, isn't he? Or has he still got his European title? I'm not sure. Mm, he might have had to vacate it. Has he might have had to vacate it. Yeah, he's vacated it. Yeah, he's vacated it. Robbie Davis Jr. has vacated as well, hasn't he? Yeah, but, you know, what, what these titles, a lot of people just take them because it makes the fight bigger at that point, but they don't actually care about the title or want to defend it like... You know, Josh Whale did uh, for a while, so, you know, a lot of them just, Matchroom likes to, and other promoters like to go shows where they just have a title on the line and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit like Lenny Dawes, he fought for the European title three times, didn't he? Yeah, because it, meant, it probably meant something to him, you want to win it because you think that's the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, Junior Witter, uh we're in, we're in four uh, European title fights, and I think it's a decent belt. It's a springboard into world rankings the old-fashioned way, isn't it? Yeah, you think? I think you get a WBA ranking if you win it. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Top fifteen guaranteed. But then again, yeah. Conor Ben, who's not really beat anybody, he got a top six ranking, and he's never fought for a British or a European or a Commonwealth. I mean, and he uh, got in through cat yeah. flap, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, that's another ridiculous one, Conor Ben. I mean, we could spend all day talking about his oh, ranking God. and how that works. I know, yeah. What did you think to uh, the rest of the rest of the show then, Rico? Who caught your eye? Obviously, you watched the, y y the Yidget fight. He beat that Sire Osgel, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, what did you think to uh, Sam Gilly? What do you, do you like him? Uh, he's the welterweight. I think he's decent, but welterweight yeah, kid, isn't he? Think. From from your neck at Woods, isn't he? East London, isn't he? Leighton Star or something. Yeah, he is. I mean, they have quite a few London fighters there, but he's another guy that he's all right. But nobody really. The main guy that caught my eye was uh, he was fighting against a journeyman, uh, but he was a float and he fought after the uh, I imagine the broadcast and a guy called Donovan Mortlock. And he's 4-0. Uh, he just had good power. He had the right sort of attitude where he looked quite mean. And, you know, he was had a good style that was entertaining. So I'll definitely be seeing where he's fighting next. Um, but I think the main thing when he was playing was a wild match card. So there was four or five fights that were all uh, competitors. They had a few pull-outs, though, didn't they? Yeah, Chantel Cameron pulled out. Um, well, Donovan Mortlock yeah. against Dwayne Green. 
Yeah, and they were meant to have Quasi uh, Quasi Kadimi oh. against Yesna Tal Tel Aviv. They they that were cancelled, wasn't it? Yeah. They had late pull out. That's it. Yeah, they were put. They were pulled out, weren't they, the day before weighing. But other than that, the J the Jack Eubank is not no relation to Christopher or English, yeah. is it? The whole time at the bar. Yeah. Mo Pryor show. You what, mate? What did you say when you were yeah, what? The Mo when you and I went to Mo Pryor show with Liam Cameron and Derek. Oh yeah, uh, your call. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We just spent the whole time at the bar. Yeah, because you can't you can't go sit down and have a drink, can you? Exactly. Yeah, the good old days. But yeah, it's uh, I like your call. I do I do like your call, Rico. I think it's uh, I think it's all right. Your call. It's uh, it's it's an iconic venue, isn't it? Well, that Bradley Axel won on points, and he's I can explain it now. He's had he's had two fights, three fights, sorry now, and he's had twelve rounds, but he ain't had a stoppage, so and he's twenty four in lightweight, so he, he he's coming on, but uh, I just think that he could end up he could end up doing he could end up doing something. I've heard a couple of people say he's half all right, but uh, obviously. Sam Gilly won, didn't he? And uh, Saya Osgill lost, didn't he? What did you think to Daniel Eggbun Nike? Yeah, Martin McDonough. Donny Darko is what they call him. Donny uh, Darko, yeah. He, he was full of his same, wasn't he? Yeah, he had good support as well. Uh, yeah. He had attitude. He, uh, I think he fought Jake Paul in the And what? And obviously, we 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 had Ryan. I had Ryan Welsh losing. Did you have him losing? Yeah, I had him losing by a couple of rounds. And uh, obviously, that were down to judges won it. Uh, Ian John Lewis yet again. <laughs> he gave it in by six rounds. I know, crazy. Now. Okay, I, I have a question for you. Yeah, go on. You will know the answer. Why? I don't know, a fight of that magnitude against Miguel Vas Vasquez, former world champion, and Oara Davis, who's, who's destined the same for greatness, or the same if he could get lucky and win a world title. You'd have thought that would have been judges, three judges, not one, wouldn't you? Exactly. Now, I, it's, I found that strange myself, but... What I did see were on his scoring from Marcus McDonnell. He gave it 15, uh, 115, 213 by two rounds to Lewis Paulin. Now, Mark Lyson had it by a round, but Ian John Lewis had it by six rounds. I mean, he had Awara Davis by three rounds, and he had it by six rounds to Ryan Walsh. What? Fucking, is he watching the stupid bastard? He needs fucking putting on disability living allowance. The guy's a fucking blind man. I don't give a fuck Dennis has told me not to hammer him. He needs fucking hammering, mate. I mean, Listen, the guy's a fucking disgrace to boxing. He's the only man I know that can stop a bus at 100 mile an hour, a double-decker bus. Do you remember the Enzo Macronelli fight? Which one? The Shane McPhilbin one. No, I don't, to be honest. Ian John Lewis stopped that, didn't he? It was the worst stoppage I've ever seen. I thought the Johnny Nelson, Carl Thompson one were bad, but... You know, it's just one thing to another with this guy. He's an incompetent referee and he's a fucking incompetent judge. Now, he wears glasses, right? 
Ian John Lewis wears glasses, mate. So why don't he fucking wear them when he's a referee? Yeah, no idea. There's a uh, fucking blind man, mate. I mean, if you go look at some of his scoring, it's shocking, mate. I mean, six rounds to Ryan Welsh. Fucking hell, fireman. Six rounds. Jesus. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe it, mate. And, you know, the two biggest fights of the night is referee one and is a judging other. And if he judges that to that Pauling, right, he wins on a split decision. That put Lewis exactly. Paul in, doesn't he? Exactly, yeah. And that's the fucking difference. He, his card was the difference. Now, and the other one, he's he, he, he's had a big influence in the two biggest fights on the night. Now, he's either bent and he's taking money, or he is incompetent, which means he shouldn't be a fucking ref or a judge. And he needs his marching orders, he's made a few quid hard at job, and he's sending on his way, mate. He's got a fucking job, is he a prison screw or something, him? Yeah, something like that. He's a prison yeah. screw, isn't he, or something? Well, he needs to fuck off back and be a prison screw. Do you know what I mean? Because if he's judging fights like that, fucking hell fight, what hope is the for the rest of us? No wonder he don't get any big gigs, you know. Yeah, because you can't trust him. They can't be trusted. I don't think he's in a any, no governing body. Um, the governing bodies obviously have their own reps that they prefer you use. So I don't think he's on any governing bodies because he's no chef, to be honest. Fucking WBU, man, isn't he? He does WBU. Yeah, I mean, what fights are there WBU? Not None, mate. But like I said, Ian John Lewis... He is shocking, 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 mate. He, he, he's fucking bad, mate. And do you know what? We're going to have years of him, mate, because he's only 56 year old. We've got, uh, what well, we've got of him now, another fucking four year, or is it fucking nine year? Is it 60 or 65 they fuck him off? I'm not sure. Something like that. Well, referee. listen, mate. Well, they can they can go they can do go do it in Europe, can't they? They can yeah. do it in Europe, mate. But yeah, he's a prison screw. It says here, fucking prison screw. Look at him here, in prison uniform. Jesus, do you know what I mean? There's a, there's a picture of him here in a prison uniform, unless he's been an actor in some. Act. I don't know, mate, I don't but... Think can be an actor. Listen, mate, he, the guy's a fucking disgrace, mate. Nobody dares say a word to him, though. Nobody dares say a word to him, mate, but he needs to sort himself out. He needs to get off the crack and uh, and start sobering up and, uh, and fucking put his glasses on. But, uh, but anyway, uh, so we've spoke about the MTK show. What did you think about... Finishing off, we'll just finish off on that sequence with O'Hara Davis. What do you think? I mean, I don't think he has improved at all. And, and his bar is just weird. He wasn't throwing any punches. And when he was throwing the punches, it was just that right-hand telegraph. I just don't think he's a very good fighter anymore. I think he was... Sort of, they put guys like Tom Powell and uh, Derry Matthews in front of him to make him look good, but he struggled to be a British level at this point. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see what you mean, mate. I see what you mean. So, so where do you see O'Hara Davis going from now on, then? I think they'll feed him to someone. You there think they'll what? Higher, they're, they're either matching with Anthony Giggett. Or they try and find a good fight for him where he can take a voluntary world title fight and get paid and then he's out of the sport. Yeah. Do you think O'Hara's done now then? Do you think that's he'll not come back from that? I don't think he will because I'm not sure that he actually wants to be a boxer. He spends more time on Instagram these days than he does focusing on boxing and I think it's just a way for him to make money. It's not a way for him to... He's not enjoying it anymore. I think he's been screwed over so, by so many people that, you know, Eddie Hearn and, you know, uh, what's he call it, Charlie Sands and 
all that club. So I think the enjoyment of boxing is gone from him. Yeah, yeah. He looks to me like he's bought his centre flat and he's got another flat that he's renting out and he seems to have lost that edge. Exactly. Because he never had out in his life, you see, and he might just start, he might, I don't know, he might just feel a bit of normality in his life like he's not struggling. I don't know, he, it does happen that, uh, trust me, you can lose a bit of hunger if you get a few quid, it does happen. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys that he's now reached the ceiling and he's driving a nice car and he's quite comfortable and he's well known, so he'd rather just do his YouTube stuff and ride on his phone. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good, mate, is it? But I, I personally think that that's it for our hour, Davis. And I hope not because I've met him; he's likable. And I think I don't think people really got really got to see uh, what he were like because they had him behaving like a plant pot, didn't they, at matchroom trying to sell fights? And that now he's wanted to be himself. I think he's got sort of got his son in a situation where. He'll just go anywhere and fight. He doesn't sell a ticket. He's only had four fights as well since Josh Taylor knocked him out two years ago. So he's not exactly active, is he? No. Um, the same. I've met him as well. He's actually quite a shy guy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Very polite. So I've heard that he's uh, he's struggled with weight this time as well. I've heard he might be going up to welterweight. That's what I've heard. He's too small. He's got long arms, but he's too small. What, to go up to welterweight? Yeah, I think so. So he'll stay at light welter, do you think, yeah? I don't think he will, but, but he's too small for welterweight. Yeah, yeah, some welterweights out there are a lot bigger than O'Hara. I mean, O'Hara really should be a lightweight, if you ask me. I agree. Uh, I, think, I mean, did he start out as a super feather? Probably, yeah. Let's have a look. But uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see where he goes from here now because he's had a lot of hype around him. But then again, all that match, he started out at match and they all had a lot of hype around him, didn't they? I mean, I remember when Barry Earn told Awara Davis to go dye his hair blonde. And Awara says, you're joking me. And he says, no, you've got to play the game, Sam. Do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I, I do worry for Awara Davis now, and I think that could be it really. I think, and you know all, and you know what? The funny thing is in boxing, he'll be matched now in really hard fights. Now he will be put in really, really, really hard, hard fights. Now you just watch, you just watch what happens, and it's a shame really because he's only just he's 27 year old. He's 19 and 2. Fair enough, he ain't got a belt, has he? Right? Yeah. Unless you want to count that WBC International Super Lightweight belt, which I don't really count myself, but he's not got a belt. Has he won a, what belts has he won? He's won an English and a Commonwealth. He's got an English and a Commonwealth. He needs to go get a British title, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He needs a British title so he can go English, British, Commonwealth. Then and he's got the bottom three belts, and then he can move on for the for the for, for the for you know for the next couple of belts. But I'd like to yeah. see him box for a British title. Uh, let's see who's got the British title. I think sometimes when a guy is beatable. They don't want to match them at British level and European level. They just want to get them world ranked and get them a world title fight as quickly as possible. Do you reckon, yeah? Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, it's classic matchroom do that long. You just let a guy fight, you know, call it bed. I wouldn't be surprised if in a two years' time he's fighting for a world title. Oh, call it bed? Yeah, just get, because he's ranked, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The British champion is Robbie Davis Jr. But but I wonder if the belt's vacated. Let's have a look. Now he might want to win it outright. That belt. Uh, he might want to win it outright. But I'd like to see O'Hara Davis. 
I'd like to see O'Hara Davis get a, uh, a British title. That's what I'd like to see, wouldn't you? Yeah, but I, I'm a big fan of the traditional route of getting the British title, then the European and Commonwealth title, and then going to a world on it. Yeah, yeah, I am. Right, so enough about O'Hara Davis, then we've covered that. Uh, the MTK show, we've covered that. Anthony Yard. What next for Anthony Yard? Well, I said to sort of like, oh, good luck in Russia if you're going to go, and he just smiled. So I don't really know what's going on there. Um, well, I mean, they've been saying it's been happening for months now. He's not had a fight since March. Yeah, I th I'm not sure whether that's Kovalev's team who wants him to fight again, you know, if there's a World Boxing Super Series. Um, you know, for that division, the light heavies, or whether there's something, whether the backers are pulled out, but it seems like a messy situation. Yeah. What next for Anthony Yard? Well, it's probably going to be more of the same if it's all world titles. I mean, you know, Anthony Yard, right? Anthony Yard's number 12 on box, right? And he's mandatory for WBO, isn't he? Yes. Right. So let's have a look who Anthony Yard's best win is. Right. I'm not going to go through all 18 because he's knocked 17 of them out. Uh, it's Locker, what's he called? That weird guy. Do what? I can't remember what his name is, is he? It's Locker or something like that. I mean, well, he's a European guy. He's only beat nine guys with winning records. So Anthony Yards basically f beat nine guys that have got winning records. So he's nine and zero as far as I'm concerned. Not eighteen and zero. He's nine and zero, and his last two, four, six, eight, nine. Fucking hell. His last he, nine of his last ten have got winning records. So, I mean, he fought Darren Snow in April 2017. He lives up here near me. Now, Snowy shouldn't have been in the ring with him. But, uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? He's just beat Travis Reeves, right? Travis Reeves. Let's have a look at his record. Because this is where fans are being conned. Travis Reeves has just beat three guys, right? Larnell Bellows, have you heard of him? Devin Butcher, yeah. six and two, and he and he and he lost to Caro Moret. Right before yeah, that, this this uh, Travis Reeves were fighting guys like Jose Obando. Uh, he, he had a losing record. Uh, Tineo Goyo, Goyko, he had a losing record. Uh, you know, it's shocking. Laren Pryor, 9 and 13. And, you know, what's fucking going on here? But Anthony Yard were fighting him and it were billed as a 50 50. I mean, what the fucking hell's going on here? Before him, he fought Walter Gabriel Sequiri. Now, that le that record looks good, doesn't it? 21 and 4. But who were he fighting before he fought Yard? He fought a guy with 12 losses. Before he fought Yard, then he fought a guy with a losing record, Pablo Hernan Curbilo. You know, then he fought, Mar before him he fought Martin Fidel Rios, he got 11 losses. Then he fought a guy with 5 losses out of 18 fights. You know, it's just shocking this, but, you know, Yard's being built up and built up. They've had a lot of PR off that Kovalev, uh the Kovalev situation, and the fight doesn't even look like it's made, Rico. It's fucking bad, isn't it? It is, but everybody does it, right? You just, you have other people's names to buy your own, you know, your own fighter's name, and I don't know, I mean, we need to see what Fag tries to explain why the fight hasn't happened. Yeah. I doesn't look good, I doesn't look good for Team Yard, but I genuinely don't think they care, because they're not, you know, they sort of trolling everybody with this, the stuff that Tundi says and the things they do, I think they sort of just take it a piss of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't I personally don't think he's gonna get four point two million dollars 
to fight Kovalev in Russia. I don't think it'll happen. I think it's another one of them Bernard Hopkins, uh, Nathan Cleverly fight. You know, another or a Wilder against Chisora. You know, another one of them Frank Warren fucking yeah. announcements that just never happen. So, but that's all fish eyes for you. So, right, we'll park Anthony Yard up then. We'll move on to Parker against Leapy. Leaper or something. Leaper. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think to him? 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 Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a comeback fight for Parker. And he did what he had to do. I think Parker's an interesting guy in the division because if Ruiz can beat Doshua, and they had a relatively competitive fight, so I think, you know, Parker on a, on a good day can cause trouble for any of the heavyweights. Um, but, it's, but he's a bit too small. But I think, you know, he's an interesting guy to watch, so... You know, him against someone like Usyk would be a good yardstick to see actually how good Usyk is in the division and how he can handle big guys. I wouldn't call him a gatekeeper, but he's, he's not a bad guy, though. Yeah, you could say he's a Chisora type, innit? Exactly, yeah. So he's not, I mean, what Chisora was before he became a gatekeeper, but one of those guys that if you want to get to the top of the heavyweight division, you need to be able to beat um, Parker. Or oh, you need to be able to create a, a, a sort of following, be like Dave Allen's done, don't you, to keep it mixed? Yeah, exactly. You need a bit of a following to get in the mix and uh, keep yourself out there, but whereas. You know, Yui Fury and take Dave Allen apart, won he, in a, in a fight, but Yui do not get his scent out there, does he? No. And, and Dave will not want to fight Yui. <laughs> no. But partly that's as well a full time job, so it detracts from boxing. Uh, if you're always on social media, you're always doing videos. I, I mean, I don't care how much somebody says they train, and but if you're training hard, you'll be tired, and you don't want to be talking to the fans constantly, so. It takes away from boxing, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, this is it, you see. This is why Dave's technically not very good because he spends all his time on social media, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's starting to take the sport a bit more seriously. From well, he's going to say that, isn't it? Look, he'll, he's going to say that. He's going to he's going to say he's playing game, isn't he? Yeah. He's going to play the game. You'll get another, the more he keeps winning, the more better it is for him. But if he loses, they'll bring him back anyway because Matt Young's stable's in such in disarray that, I mean, fucking hell. It wouldn't surprise me if fucking White Show didn't get cancelled. We we're still three weeks away, aren't we? Yeah, I think that show's done all right on tickets so far. So, no, I mean, it's all incredibly well, but still, I think that will just go ahead. You know, yeah. White, his wife will fight anybody, he doesn't care, he just wants to gain the ring and fight. Well, listen, he, he didn't want to fight Wilder, did he? Or, uh, you know, the, the Pool F, or uh, Ortiz, he didn't want to fight them, did he? No, but on one hand, he's a very savvy business guy, so he, he, he'll fight whoever he needs to fight, but he'll make sure that he gets paid well for it without losing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can understand. Bulgaria against Kulik does nothing for him. You what? Going to fight in Bulgaria against Kulik does nothing for him. If, if he wins or loses. Yeah. He could have gone out. He'd have beat Pulik. White. Dillian White would have beat Pulik. But he didn't want to risk it, did he, for little money? No. Now, what about White against Rivers? What do you think to that? I mean, Rivers is there to be knocked over, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's a small heavyweight, he's six foot. Um, you know, white, uh, I wouldn't say a big heavyweight, but he's sizable. Um, so I think, you know, it's one of those fights where Rivers will come for the first few rounds, throw a lot of punches, he will be quite action packed, but ultimately, white will just beat him down and probably stop him. What do you think? Yeah, I think that uh, 
I think Dillian White is going to be in an hard fight, mate. That Rivers has no mug. He's an Olympian. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's a mug. He's undefeated. And I think that he's a, he's a tough fight. But I think Dillian White should come for it. But it is a tough fight. It's the hardest fight out of the top guys who have been fighting recently. Obviously, Joshua should have should have beat Ruiz on paper, shouldn't he? But he didn't, did he? But I'd say White, before they all had the fights, and we all agreed that this was the hardest fight, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, we all agreed that, but I do think that if you're going to be fighting against Joshua or Ruiz, you need to be picking a taller opponent. That would just make sense. Yeah. So you continue having taller opponents. I think ultimately what they've got is they pick someone that will come to fight. It's going to look good for the you know pay per view audience. Yeah. But ultimately they don't believe that Rivers can beat uh, uh, White. I mean the guy was losing to Brian Jennings at points before he stopped Brian Jennings. Mm, yeah. Right. So you you're going for Parker to beat Lee Pei, aren't you? Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. You you you're going for that, aren't you? Yeah. You've yeah. gone for that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So you go. You're going for White to be uh, Rivers, aren't you? Yeah, late stoppage. Yeah, you're going for White late stoppage. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. Uh, what about? Well, I'll be. I'll be with you. We'll be watching the fight uh, at yours then. Yeah, we'll we'll watch the uh, the White Rivers. We'll be exactly. watching that at mine then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he uh So basically, Joseph Parker obviously round 10 KO last night, but the guy's pushing 40 year old, wasn't he? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Pushing 40 year old. Yeah, it were in Providence, you know, it were an, it were uh, an Eddie Earn show in Providence. I mean, Jesus, 2 4 6 8 10 they had nine fights on, you know, yeah, so, me. they had Anthony Conception on as well, so, which surprised me, he slipped him in. Yeah, he hasn't mentioned that one. No, he, uh, he, he uh, he's kept that quiet, but, uh, they had him on, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, just looking at Eddie's show here, I'm surprised Parker didn't headline because, pff, I don't know, I mean, Eddie's got nine out of nine wins last night on his show. I mean, uh, some of these opponents' records here are, are shocking, although uh, Saluki, 28-1 and one in Bad Burt, you know, Andrade is a class act, isn't he? Andrade. Yeah, I think he lost to Danny Jacobs, didn't he? So, he... He's a guy that comes forward, you know, he's a tough guy. Nobody wants to watch Andrade. And Eddie Hearn said, oh, you know, when I sign Andrade, he just needs more promotion. Uh, who has he actually fought since he's signed with Eddie Hearn? Who cares about Andrade in the US? You yeah. know what are talking about? What kind of promotional job has he done for Andrade? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arthur Jones won. Terry's a fan of him. He gave me a bit of stick yeah. over day for... Uh, for not for not for not bigging him up, but I suppose really, you know, Eddie's just getting him over line these shows in America. But these quality of these shows are better than what he's giving Sky, aren't they? Well, we've got at least world championship fights. Well, he's got Andrade he in a world title fight. Billy Joe's old belt. He had Yafai on last night. That's two world title fights. Do you know what I mean? Two world title fights on there, but he can't put them on Sky. Yafai's a British kid. Why is, exactly. he fi why is he fighting in America? No hey. idea. It's unbelievable, mate. But he's saying that Yafai wants the American money. Yafai's 26 and 0 now. It's about time he headlined an, an event in in UK. Because he's only headlined one, has he, or two? Is it one? Yeah, he's had... This is his first defence since he won the world title. Five, so he's had six world title wins then, yeah? Well, five world title, six world title fights. Yeah. Uh, five defences. Yeah. Well, that's how I look at it, mate. I just think that 
Eddie's putting all his eggs in a ba in one basket with Americans. They must be paying him some mega dough, mate. That's all I can say. They must be paying him mega dough. Right, I want to finish up on. We've spoke about the Sky contract, haven't we? Basically, saying that yes. they're gonna. Eddie Hearn's probably going to have to share the dates when the new contract comes, you know, with Sourland and probably MTK or somebody. But looking at what was, what's was what been said last couple of weeks, it's supposed to be Spencer Fearon, a historian, isn't he? Yes. Boxing historian. But yeah, when he was on the show, he was going on about... Somebody asked him on Toe to Toe, he asked, they asked him and Carl Frotch, who Carl Frotch rematched, who only guy he rematched, uh, yeah. uh, other than Groves, and he couldn't name it, it was Kessler, but he's supposed to be a boxing historian. Yeah. And who, who, were the w, who were the guy Joe Calzaghe uh, had a split decision with, who Carl Frotch knocked out, it was Robin Reed. he couldn't get that right, so he's a failed boxing historian as well. Well, now it looks to me, every time I turn on my TV, I've got Spencer Fearon doing interviews, not about boxing, he's, do, he's going on about diversity and he's doing talks about it. He, he, is he losing his mind? Yeah, let's start off with his point. I, I don't think talking about diversity is a bad thing, but what I disagree with him about is that it's not about having diversity as in, you know, black or Asian face on the screen, it's about having diversity of opinion. Yeah. So we can't just have the same Sky Lackey, the next Sky Fighters on television. Because it doesn't matter whether you, you know, you have a Johnny Nelson there for diversity, but that does nothing for diversity or for opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, it doesn't really make a difference. You had Ian uh, Drake on Sky, um, you've got Ronald McIntosh. You know, it's not, I don't really know what his point is because boxing in terms of who's on telly and stuff is relatively diverse, but it's about having the best people there. In the US you have Andre Ward there, you know, you have Sergio Moore, you have all sorts of people, but the best analysts make it. Yeah, uh, look, I don't think you can bring colour or race into, into jobs. And not yeah. in, not in sport. I don't I don't think you can. I don't think there's that many people uh, one one uh, who are non-white want to want to do the job anyway. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know where he's coming from with that. But I do know that he's upset quite a few people with it. He didn't do anything any favors. So is he coming to end of his tether with Sky now? Probably is. You know, he's employed by MTK, isn't he? Yeah, he's wormed his way in there and he's bigging them up in every interview now, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's not a case of, um, you know, that people don't want to be employed, but it's about employing the best people. I mean, this country is full of shit boxing pundits. Just find <laughs> the ones that are good and keep them on, on the telly because then after every show on Twitter, we don't have to moan about the poor commentary by Royal McIntosh or the, you know, the outlandish claims by Johnny Nelson. Just get somebody that has balance and can give opinions. Or oh, the judging <laughs> by Ian, Ro Ian John Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Ian John Lewis is a black man, isn't he? Exactly. He can't even fucking see. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Do you think Sky would employ someone like, let's say, Teddy Atlas that actually gives their opinions about what they think? They wouldn't dare fucking set Teddy Atlas on, would they? No. And, you know, that's what the TV needs. It doesn't need diverse faces. It needs diverse opinions. Yeah, it needs Teddy Atlas or Porky Ross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and when you, uh, when you speak, they might have subtitles sometimes when you say Ray. Ray, Ray, R-E-Y-T. -E Terry, Ray, lads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, listen, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Rico. Yeah, it's been and, a pleasure. Uh, and I'll, I'll, right. I'll see you. Well, listen, you take care. I'll, speak, I'll see you soon anyway, and this will be up this week sometime. All right? All right, send, send to my best, Richard. All right, you take care, mate. All right, mate. Cheers, bye. Bye.